In my opinion, this was definitely a group project, whether or not people realize it. The receptionist at my school um, would send me notes in my mailbox all the time from this calendar that she has. It's called uh, Wild, Wor Ugh. Wild Words from Wild Women. And it's awesome. <laughs> and would you like me to read some of them? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this one is from Anne. <clears throat> Another quote I thought you'd like, she said. Um, how, how can I tell other women to be fearless and true to themselves if I can't do the same? I am who I am, tattoos and all. And that was from Teresa Vale, Army National Guard, Miss Kansas, and the first woman to show her tattoos in the Miss America pageant. How cool is that? Um, another one, makeup can only make you look pretty on the outside, but it doesn't help if you're ugly on the inside unless you eat the makeup. I really love those from Anne. Um, we had have really long conversations about what I was doing in her anyway. So I um, had to raise money uh, to enter the pageant for a charity. So um, I needed $100, which is not much, but I had to figure it out. Yeah, I baked 200 sugar cookies, sold them each for 50 cents um, to my students and to the faculty members. And um, so, they were my financial support. <laughs> um, my mom was um, my shopping buddy. Victoria was my other shopping buddy. Um, you know, Elaine, my dance teacher. Um, Kristen Kelly, my drama teacher. Like everybody, you know, came around and was like asking me how I was doing, and it was just very much um, like a community thing, which was amazing. And um, I was reading. An article the other day about the woman who just won uh, Miss Universe, um, Miss Philippines, and what I thought was interesting in the way she talked about winning was that um, so no one from the Philippines had won for around 40 years, and she was like, "In the Philippines, it's a big deal. It's been 42 years since we last won, yeah. so everybody's been anticipating to finally get the crown, and we finally did it." She said the collective we, which is like really interesting to me, and I've never heard that speech being used in competitions like this. It's usually about I, but I think people need to realize that the amount of preparation that goes in is not just that person. Um, and that might be positive or negative depending on how you look at it. Um, but in my mind, I think I think it's cool that it's a, it's a group project. Um, and I think most performers don't can't do anything alone. Uh, I didn't think, I had a lot of doubts uh, going through this process, uh, whether or not I would be accepted in, um, in the beauty pageant arena, because um, I know that um, it's a place where you're highly criticized, you have to please judges, right? And it's not necessarily that they're outwardly being like, oh, like, Know, you're too buff or something or you're too XYZ like the the judges aren't gonna do that but they're looking at you and they're gonna write things down and stuff so um, I was um, a little bit nervous about how I would be perceived um, as a black woman um, with natural hair because um, my family friend had suggested that I straighten my hair and I told her, I actually put my foot down, I was like, no, there's no way I'm doing that. I um, spent years relaxing my hair and um, before I moved to Japan I had to cut it off because I couldn't relax it for, they, they didn't have relaxers over there, so I had to chop my hair all off and when it grew back I realized how healthy it was um, and I didn't want to destroy my hair again so I was like, no. I, I'm not doing that. Um, and the other part is I'm also lazy and straightening takes a very long time and I said no, I just want to be me and like that's the irony of this thing, right? <laughs> I don't want to be judged but I'm putting myself on the stage where I will be judged.
Yeah, I guess the advice I would give to any girl who's trying to do a pageant or feels like they're a little bit different and but st and still want to try to be, you know, Miss New York or I don't know, Miss Kansas or whatever it may be that you can be different, I think. Um, and I think that there needs to be different people because people want more. Um, I mean, you see it in the fashion industry. There's a lot of firsts, as you might call them, like, you know, people who are dark, darker skins, people who are handicapped, people who are, you know, plus size, whatever, what have you. Um, they're starting to break molds. I saw the other day, Jaden Smith is now uh, modeling women's wear and people are celebrating it. I think people want to celebrate difference now. Um, and to be honest, the audience is not necessarily the ones who are in complete control of that. Um, of who's, the audience is not in control of who the winner is or who, who gets valued on stage necessarily. And I think that Though the judges are the ones who make the decisions and have the standards and are the ones who are scoring, don't worry about that because that's only a few people. And I think that going on stage and showing who you are and letting the world know, not just like four or five people know that I'm proud of what I'm presenting and who I am, I think there's value in that and that you'll reach so many. I think it's about how many people you reach. Because um, I've learned to make decisions and act in a way that help the most people. And though, and though I didn't progress throughout the pageant series, I think I did send a message by doing what I wanted to do the way I wanted to do it, and there's value in that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm a very competitive person, so I was a little disappointed that I did not receive any runners-up, no sour grapes there. <laughs> at all. Um, no, seriously, there aren't any sour grapes because I didn't realize that. Um, there were there were people who were happy with what I did. My mom was proud of me. My family was proud of me. Um, um, I, I had fun performing. I, I did. Um, and so having that experience and doing something that was out of my comfort zone was actually pretty exhilarating and rewarding in a way that I mean, I don't know if I disrupted the pageant system. I was, you know, in small town Buffalo, small city Buffalo, really. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just felt like it, it was a small movement, maybe. I, I don't, I don't want to give myself too much credit because I, I don't feel like anything is gonna change. Um, Maybe if more people who, I don't know, we're just like not the typical pageant expectation. We would see a lot more diversity up there. But then again, I don't know if, I don't know if that's what we really, well, I don't know if that's what should happen, to be honest. Um, because I think it becomes hard to like, once diversity is celebrated on the stage, how do we distinguish who's better than another person? Um, I think that's the question that it comes down to. Um, if, it, if it ever gets to that point, which there's a long way to go if this is, if we want to change these for women as a whole. Um, the central question is like, why, why do we value them? Um, um, what do what does society get out of them? Um, and there could be like like a lot of reasons that I've only done one pageant. I don't know too much about how they operate. 
besides my own experience. Um, so for those who complain about it, and even for those who value it, I think it's st it's important for each new pageant that's run to ask, like, why do we do this? Why are we passionate about this? Or why do I not like this? Um, and take whatever answers come, like, that you think are right in your heart, like, take those, and that's how you elicit change, either in a positive or a negative way. For how can you possibly pick out one winner? It's like choosing dessert from a tray of French pastry. Anyway, that's a sweet thought. There's a complicated scoring system, which we won't go into, that gives the crown to a sparkling brown-eyed charmer from Holland, Stani van Beer, 19. She's the winning ace in this deck of 52.